Tonight, family members here in Houston want answers after a husband and wife are shot and killed in front of their own children. This happened in Maine, where the couple had moved recently. Our Grace White spoke to family members tonight and has the very latest on this investigation. Man, the son were better not had done this, man. Listen here, some words. Y'all bet not had done this shit, man. Y'all bet not had done this shit, you goddamn some words. Very latest on this investigation. I spoke to Maine State Police just a few hours ago, and they told me this is not road rage. There's no known connection between the victims and the suspect. But when I asked about motive, they said it was too early to say. Mike and Brittany, unarmed, defenseless, unaware of the danger. For this grandfather, it's an unimaginable pain. In that car that day are Mason and Maddie Bell. They each represent two gifts from God. They are Jeff McKinney's grandchildren. He traveled from Houston to Maine to be by their side. Police say the children, an 11 year old boy and a seven year old girl, were in the back seat of the car when their parents, Michael Hader and Brittany Cockrell, were shot and killed. They were just shocked, man. They were shocked. They were staring at the dad and like the, the older brother, man, he tried to hold the sister to the best of his ability, try to comfort her and everything. On Monday, June 19th, people nearby rushed to help. Police arrested this man, Marcel LaGrange Jr. <laughs> so. This is the second one in New England. We had the three, we had the three seniors murdered in um Boston a couple of days ago. We covered that on the last, on another show. We'll check up on that in a, in a minute, man. We had the three seniors killed in Boston by the sun, man. And then we got this. Mm. It's the only channel you're going to get this, man. No one else is going to talk about this, man. No one else is going to talk about this lovely couple, man. This lovely couple, man, that just executed in front. And, and, and the father said it best, man. They had no idea the danger they were in. They had no idea the danger they were in. They had no idea the danger they were in. <sighs> you gliders gotta wake up, man. You gliders gotta wake up, man. They're not even going to mention hate crime. Mm, mm, mm. 
Tonight, family members here in Houston want answers after a husband and wife are shot and killed in front of their own children. This happened in Maine, where the couple had moved recently. Our Grace White spoke to family members tonight and has the very latest on this investigation. I spoke to Maine State Police just a few hours ago, and they told me this is not road rage. There's no known connection between the victims and the suspect. But when I asked about motive, they said it was too early to say. Mike and Brittany, unarmed, defenseless, unaware of the danger. For this grandfather, it's an unimaginable pain. In that car that day are Mason and Maddie Bell. They each represent two gifts from God. They are Jeff McKinney's grandchildren. He traveled from Houston to Maine to be by their side. Police say the children, an 11 year old boy and a seven year old girl, were in the back seat of the car when their parents, Michael Hader and Brittany Cockrell, were shot and killed. They were just shocked, man. They were shocked. They were staring at the dad and like the, the older brother, man, he tried to hold the sister to the best of his ability, try to comfort her and everything. On Monday, June 19th, people nearby rushed to help. Police arrested this man, Marcel Lagrange Jr. He's accused of shooting the couple while they were sitting in their car near an intersection. Family in Houston launched this GoFundMe for the children as this grandfather prepares to travel back to Texas, heartbroken. We can all do better than that. We must all do better than that. I spoke to one of Brittany Cockrell's relatives this evening. She told me she expects McKinney to be back in Houston today. Meantime, LaGrange is in jail, charged with two counts of murder. Gross White, KHOU, 11 News. Up here at 5 o'clock tonight, we are learning more about the man accused of murdering three elderly people inside of a Newton home and the evidence that police used to track him down. That picture is of Christopher Ferguson. He faced the judge today, not in person, but instead he was on Zoom. Thank you for joining us. I'm David Wade. And I'm Lisa Hughes. His arrest put an end to fear and anxiety among people in Newton and surrounding towns. WBZ's Christina Hager is live in Newton. Christina, have prosecutors found any link between Ferguson and the victim? Well, they did not give any indication they knew each other in court today. We do know the victims and the suspect lived within a mile of each other, and he was seen roaming the neighborhood the day this all unfolded. This is Chris Ferguson's booking photo. Relatives of his three alleged victims who came to court did not get a chance to see him in person. His defense attorney, Dimitri Lev. Our condolences to the families of the DMRAs and the Arpinos. That's all we have at this time. Why, why didn't we see him in court? Thank you. He was, he appeared by video. On video, but out of view of those observing in the courtroom and hours after the arraignment that was originally scheduled was unexpectedly delayed with a mysterious ambulance visit at the police lockup. So the court is now in session. In court. Prosecutors describe video of Ferguson walking within a mile of this Broadway Street home where 73-year-old Jilda DeMore, her 74-year-old husband Bruno, and 97-year-old mother Lucia Arpino were found stabbed to death Sunday. They never showed up for a planned church celebration to renew their 50th anniversary wedding vows that morning. And the video uh, at about 5.20 a.m. depicted a man who was wearing no shirt, uh, no shoes, and appeared to be staggering. Prosecutors say there were signs of forced entry through a basement window, that other screens were pried off, and there was a paperweight covered in blood. State police investigators uh, determined that the foot, one of the footprints that was lifted from the hallway at 49 Broadway matched the footprint of uh, Mr. Ferguson. Difficult testimony for victims' relatives to hear clutching each other in court, silent and steady as they left. Now, we've been reporting about another break-in in the area that same day. Uh, investigators say it is still unclear if Ferguson had anything to do with that. Today, his defense attorney entered a not guilty plea on his behalf. Now, two stories you won't see anywhere else on YouTube. Press one. Two stories you won't see covered anywhere else on YouTube. Press one.
or Rumble. Brutal slayings. Stabbed to death. Eight and nine and two seventy year olds and a ninety seven year old. You won't see them covered. You won't see them covered. Who will you see? Who will you see covering these, man? Who will you see covering these? These people didn't deserve this, man. This was brutal. This was this was this was these were hate crimes, man. These were hate crimes. These were hate crimes, man. These were fucking hate crimes. It's a war on gliders, man. Man. Wow, man. Wow. That's just fucking brutal, man. Golly, man. What more can you say, man? What more can you say, man? That's fucking brutal, man. Jesus Christ. There's a, there's a, a um, the, the war on gliders is international, man. It's not just in America, man. It's in Canada, it's in France, it's in fucking England. It's everywhere. My God. Can we get the five dollar challenge started now that we got three hundred in here? Let's let's get the five dollar challenge started, man. Let's see who wanna take the five dollar challenge and support the channel, man. It's been a rough week, man. Let's end the week on a good note, man. everywhere man my god Whew. those are two serious stories man my god those are two serious stories man Salute to Eric S. Salute to Eric S. Coming through once again, the Op Nation Hall of Famer. Salute to Aaron coming through with the $5 challenge. Salute to you guys, man. Salute to Johnny Rev. <laughs> said, Ock, you tempting the ladies. Shit, man. I don't know, man. Salute to Nate Ways coming through. With the five dollar challenge, heavy. Oh man, 
This shit, man, listen, man, I'm not even going to lie to y'all, man. These stories right here, these stories are fucking terrible, man. Seeing these people get snuffed out, man. And I know it's easy to say they voted for it. And I get that. Don't get me wrong. I get the whole voter for it part, but God damn. Like, these are people, they didn't even use the sun word. They didn't even get to use the sun word. I can see if you got a chance to use the sun word, like, oh, fucking sun word, you. And then, the, like, these are people that just got clapped for no reason, man. Shit is sad, man. Um, Salute to James J. That's a new name. I ain't never seen that name before. But anyway, James J. Coming through real heavy on the on the five dollar challenge, man. Salute to you, James J. Salute to Nate Way. Salute to Aaron. Salute to Eric S. Salute to Johnny Reb. Salute to all you guys supporting the channel, man. Woo! My lord, man. Oh, y'all think it's over? Oh, y'all think it's over. Nikki Zizaga. And I'm Stefan Dingle. Welcome to those of you watching on CBS News Baltimore here on WJZ TV. In our top story, police are still investigating the circumstances of that Father's Day shooting. Tonight, that victim is still recovering. WJZ is on your corner tonight in Rosedale. Miana Massey with the latest on the investigation and reaction from neighbors. Miana. Yeah, well, Nikki and Stefan, it has really shaken this community. And neighbors tell me that it all began in this walkway right here. It's often used to pass through the 7-Eleven or Rite Aid just up the street. Well, we spoke to a woman who didn't want to be on camera for fear of her own safety. But she tells us what she heard from her home on Sunday night. Just a pop, 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 pop. And I knew distinctly that that was gunshots didn't sound like fireworks didn't sound like any cars backfiring i just knew it was there were three guys running down off the hill by my house the shooting happened three guys running down off the hill by her house what did those three guys look like any cars backfiring i just knew it was there were three guys running down off the hill by my house the shooting happened near Martinique Road and Lisa Court in Rosedale. In a post on Facebook, the victim's sister says three men demanded he hand over everything. He gave them his wallet, then took... Three men demanded he hand over everything. Three men demanded he hand over everything. Road and Lisa Court in Rosedale. In a post on Facebook, the victim's sister says three men demanded he hand over everything. He gave them his wallet, then took off running and was shot in the buttocks. This is the very first shooting in this neighborhood that I know of for the last 23 years. It was very surprising. And the neighbors are very shocked. Peter Array is the president of the Neighborhood Association and has known the victim for decades. Array tells us he's loved by many, a good guy, never into any trouble, and willing to help anyone. If anybody needs him, he will help you. Okay. That is the type of young man that I saw grow up. Yeah. He's in his 40s, but he is, uh, a, he's been a wonderful neighbor. He grew up here. Neighbors say he's still recovering and that this walkway here has been a concern for years, inviting unwelcome guests into the usually quiet neighborhood. It was mm, so this walkway right here is inviting unwelcome guests into the usually quiet neighborhood. Mm. 
axles of the neighborhoods accessible. Listen, man. I remember back in the fucking 90s or the 80s, wherever this fuck it was, we got a neighborhood here in, in D.C. called Georgetown. A very affluent neighborhood, Georgetown. And they wanted to, the city wanted to put a, a, a metro station there, a train station. And then people fought tooth and nail. When I say they fought, them people fought tooth and nail to keep that damn train station away from there. People will give up having a train station in their neighborhood because of sons. They might have to fucking block off this walking trail. If this is the problem right here that's bringing sons into your neighborhood, you might have to get rid of it. Press one. Johnny Reb says the animal trail. Type of young man that I saw grow up. He's in his 40s, but he is, uh, a, he's been a wonderful neighbor. He grew up here. Neighbors say he's still recovering and that this walkway here has been a concern for years, inviting unwelcome guests into the usually quiet neighborhood. It was a little um, concerning that this happened in our neighborhood. It's a quiet little neighborhood. There is this pass through here by Rite Aid that's a little concerning. They want action, something to be done to keep community members safe. A Ray suggesting a fence to close this area off. People are shaking, uh, you know, to the core. Neighbors are very afraid that this could probably magnify to something different. Yeah, y'all, I would put a fence up there, y'all. I mean, shit, I'd go to fucking Home Depot today and fucking get some goddamn day laborers, man. Get them to put that shit up straight away. And so the man's sister says he is now home from the hospital and is on crutches. And police say they really need your help to find these three suspects. So if you have any information, you are urged to give them a call. I'm Yana Massey reporting live in Rosedale for W. Salute to Eric. Tonight, captured on surveillance cameras, Northeast Philadelphia detectives say these men are wanted suspects for multiple abductions and armed robberies. It is Thursday night. The big story on Action News is the trail of clues that the criminals left behind. Officers saying they created a pattern. The biggest piece of evidence is this U-Haul. They say that the suspects used during each crime. Action News reporter Katie Castro live for us now at the Special Victims Unit in Hunting Park with the details. Katie. Shari and Gray police say that this could be a crime of opportunity, which is why they want people to be aware of their surroundings so that this doesn't escalate. These individuals are driving around looking for victims to rob, and it's late at night. Philadelphia police. How uh, many times do I tell you guys, hunting is a real thing, man. Hunting is a real thing. Salute to Azure Scribe. He says, the minute something is done, the sudden mammies would come out with Al Sharpton and Crump and cry. By the way, I'm Muramasa. Shout out to Muramasa, man, Operation Hall of Famer. Coming through once again. Shout out to you, bro. Um, yeah, let me know your um let me know your um handles over here because I don't uh, it's man, there's so many handles to remember. <sighs> Let me know your, your YouTube handle when you when you, when you donate. Um, <laughs> that hunting thing is real, man. I think that y'all know that here, but still you don't know because you just probably think it's just these guys. Like it's in your mind, it's easy to think that like these were the only guys that were hunting that. <laughs> so that this doesn't escalate. 
These individuals are driving around looking for victims to rob, and it's late at night. Philadelphia police are looking for three to four teens or young adults they believe are involved in a robbery pattern in neighborhoods in northeast Philadelphia driving around in a U-Haul cargo van. Some people have been assaulted. Police say just before 4 o'clock this morning on the 9200 block of Delaware Avenue in Torsdale, a man was walking down the street when he was forced into a white U-Haul van at gunpoint. He was driven to an ATM to withdraw several hundred dollars. It's one of the there's things like you don't think it's going to happen where you live on your street. Police say similar crimes have happened twice on Tuesday. In the Northeast, on the 12,000 block of Academy Road, a woman was walking down the street when she was forced into the van at 4.20 a.m. According to investigators, the people in the van robbed her, punched her in the face, and then shot at her twice as she got out of the van. We're concerned. <laughs> Look how they did the chick, man. Look how they did the chick, man. 20 a.m. According to investigators, the people in the van robbed her, punched her in the face, and then shot at her twice as she got out of the van. We're concerned about that, obviously, right? They discharged twice. Less than an hour later, on the 6300 block of Roosevelt Boulevard, police say a man was inside his 2011 black Mercedes Benz when he used this TD Bank drive through in Oxford Circle. He told police a white U Haul cargo van pulled up and two men pointed guns at him and carjacked him. It's pretty scary because I'm out here a lot in the morning i mean my dad always yeah if she wasn't in philly she would be a 10. that philly effect is mean yo this girl she got potential if she just if she moved to dc or like fucking jersey shore or god damn Ohio, if she just left Philly, she would instantly be a fucking dime, man. But that Philly on her, it just put a fucking, it just puts a fucking, like, skeletal fucking, like, she would even wear her hair different. She'd have makeup on. It would just be different. That Philly shit, Philly, yeah, she like a, she like a five, but you can see the potential. You can see the potential in her. She put on a couple pounds. She eat a cheeseburger. Throw on some makeup, get her hair done. And she be fucking looking hot as hot to trot, man. But Philly just, Philly Philly rough, man, on them girls, man. It's rough on women, man. It's pretty scary because I'm out here a lot in the morning. I mean, my dad always calls me and he tells me, you know, you're not allowed to walk around the neighborhood by yourself because, you know, there can be shady people. Now, police say if you notice the U-Haul boxcar van lingering in a parking lot in the overnight hours, you should give them a phone call. Reporting live here at Special Victims, Katie Castro, Fraction News at 10 on PHL 17. The Illadelph, man, the half-life.